This is Witchbase News for Friday the 7th of July 2023 ...I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week ...there's a player constructed Odyssey material gathering one stop shop in the bubble ...and while Frontiers Elite engagement is a little quiet we look at what you can do in the galaxy right now. As always if you enjoy our videos please do hit the like button and if you haven't already be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any of our Elite Dangerous content. You can also join our Patreon if you'd like to help directly support our work. Links to that and everything else are below. With FDev's Elite Dangerous livestreams now being a once a month thing, the Discovery Scanner forum posts and Elite Dangerous newsletter now going to a when it's needed schedule, Galnet news roundups being predominantly bi-weekly and whilst it's not been specifically stated it does appear that community goals are currently at least a bi-weekly affair ...it's fair to say that Frontier are quite quiet on the Elite Dangerous front. If you've missed it and are wondering what's going on at the Cambridge developers the vast majority of their internal but public facing resources ...certainly those concerned with Elite Dangerous anyway ...seem to be almost exclusively tasked towards the company's moderately imminent Warhammer action RTS game Age of Sigmar Realms of Ruin. The public beta of which runs from today until the 10th of July. That beta should be available to download by the way by the time you see this video if you fancy trying it out. The company also has a lot at stake with the latest iteration of their Formula 1 management game F1 Manager 2023. They have a stand at the British Grand Prix which takes place over this weekend and the game itself is out at the end of this month. So in summary it appears FDev is currently primarily focused on these two expensive high profile licensed titles. The Galaxy of Elite Dangerous however carries on turning regardless and there's still plenty to do in the colossal live sandbox while you wait to see what update 16 brings at the start of August. As we reported last week the Thargoid War has seen significant progress from the home team with the invasion as things stand at least all but stopped in its tracks. Indeed again this week all alerts and invasions were cleared by community efforts and as a result there are no new invasion systems with 32 systems in a state of alert and 25 systems having been recaptured and in a state of recovery. All the affected systems will either have missions to eliminate the turgid tulips, haul goods, equipment and commodities perform medevac or evacuee transport as well as tissue sampling and power restoration challenges. Elsewhere we took a look at FDev's own community calendar this morning and as at the time of recording at least there was nothing listed on there. There are normally 4 or 5 things each month from the community so we're not sure if this is a bug or if its curation has perhaps fallen off the frontier attention radar due to what we're calling here the Sigmar effect. If you're perhaps looking to get away from the encroaching horror from beyond the stars and who can blame you then don't forget to check out the expedition pages of the Elite Dangerous star map website which I've linked below. There are always expeditions scheduled there or already on their way that you can join in with. The shenanigans around both the power play and the background simulation systems also continue unabated so there's wars to be fought, missions to be run and extensive leafleting campaigns to be executed. Even 1200 years in the future you can't escape leaflets. And if you've not yet earned the required credits to furnish your commander with their own mobile fleet carrier there's always cheddar to be made in mining them their rocks. Now is also a fantastic time to upgrade and engineer your on foot suits and weapons. Stick around for our next story to find out why. If you're looking to continue with the engineering and upgrading of your Odyssey equipment or perhaps you've struggled with what is undoubtedly one of Odyssey's more challenging barriers to entry then you're going to want to hear what I have to tell you now. Settlement raiding and the collection of materials for Odyssey's tech upgrades is, for me personally, one of the most fun and rewarding features of the Elite Dangerous Space Feet expansion. 
and once you've done a fair bit of upgrading of that gear then the surface conflict zone experience is completely transformed as you become a much more difficult target for the enemy to unalive whilst yourself becoming altogether much more capable of unaliving them. A lot of the fun and reward from the experiences from my raiding did however stem from the use of anarchy faction settlements to perpetrate mayhem whilst also filling my backpack with very useful but nonetheless ill gotten gains. It's much easier and fun to raid anarchy based odyssey settlements when collecting on foot materials. The authorities don't care and won't incarcerate, tag or pursue you for murdering and stealing from folks who choose to live in a lawless society. They knew the risks right? The unfortunate result of this was that in the early days of Odyssey player owned anarchy factions were beaten senseless by the rest of the player base as they inevitably became a murdery material gathering equivalent of a Walmart trolley dash. However and this is where it gets interesting a very clever group of players decided to use the background simulation and Odyssey's casually enforced trend towards anarchy for map gathering in a constructive way. Many months ago very quietly they identified a system that contained a few of every flavour of Odyssey settlement that's to say agriculture, high tech, industrial, military and tourism and that system also had an NPC anarchy faction present. They then began manipulating the background simulation performing missions for or against that faction as needed to get it to the point where the faction not only owns a number of these settlements in every flavour but also now the anarchy influence in the system is at 1% with all other factions significantly higher. If you're unfamiliar with how BGS shenanigans work the short version is that two factions come into conflict when their influence levels are the same. The result of that conflict means that a faction can potentially lose control of a given settlement. A factions influence will naturally and randomly ebb and flow as players pass through doing whatever takes their fancy but it's extremely unlikely that it will go down to 1% matching the anarchy faction meaning the anarchy faction in the system I'm referencing here will likely stay in control of its assets despite all the goings on around it. As players raid and assault the anarchy faction settlements throughout the system killing their people and stealing their stuff the faction will be constantly pushed towards 1%. BGS is beautiful and complicated stuff so here's what all this means. By deliberate play at effort a largely self sustaining NPC anarchy faction material farm has been established in the bubble. You can go there, murder and steal with consequence free impunity, fill your bag with life affirming odyssey materials and your doing so should, if the theory holds, help maintain the material farm for others to use. The individuals responsible contacted us during the week and asked if we would tell the community about the farm and how to use it. And so here we are. To put it even more succinctly if you're looking to murder and steal for on foot mats in Odyssey go to the system CD-51-2650 and raid the settlements of the CD-51-2650 purple gang. If the theory holds you can gather just about anything you should need. It won't hurt any player factions at all, the anarchy faction won't lose control of anything they own and the popo won't care. The odyssey material shops are open and quite frankly there's a sale on. If it works this could be a genius solution to what has been a nagging problem since Odyssey launched and our heartfelt congratulations go out to everyone involved. It'll be fascinating to see what happens to the Oddy map farm from here on. Outside the game summer sales are still on right now on both Steam and the Frontier store until July the 13th with Elite and Odyssey purchasable for a total of 15 quid. And there's a cosmetic sale on in the game itself right now as well extended until July the 10th with discounts between 30 to 40%. If you fancy decking out your ship or perhaps your newly upgraded guns and suits with some nice new shinies. What are you doing in game while you wait for update 16? Are you escaping the Thargoid war and exploring outside the bubble? Or are you planning on taking up on foot combat all in the name of shopping? Let us know in the comments below. 
That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.